okay so meeting is going to be recorded so once again i welcome you all for my second lecture of the day and in this lecture we are going to see the second topic so once again uh, is my voice clear boys and girls is my voice clear yes sir okay okay so please allow me to share my screen now i'm going to share my screen <coughs> and please let me know whether it is visible or not is it visible yes okay in today's session we are going to talk about environment ecosystem and biodiversity so this is the point of discussion it will take uh, three four lectures to complete as the topic is you know biggest one so actually we are going to we are going to start the contains we are going to see the contains which are related to uh, biodiversity environment and ecosystem as such so in this particular session we are going to talk about how the environment is uh, important and how environment is interlinked with ecosystem and biodiversity uh, we are going to talk about ecosystem first already we have seen the concept of environment we are going to talk about ecosystem what is ecosystem and how it is related to you uh, know <clears throat> activities which are there in environment even we are going to talk about biodiversity also how this biodiversity and what is the concept of biodiversity and so on so these are the agendas these are the things which we are discussing in today's session i hope you will understand what i am going to say so starting with your session as we know that uh, whenever we think about the concept of environmental science there are you know two things that we always uh, consider environmental environmental means what environmental means what we are going to talk about two different aspects and those two different aspects are living and non living things so whenever we think about environment we need to consider two different aspects two different things two different uh, things no doubt one is living things and another one is non living things so we consider two different things here one is living things and another one is non living things so those things can be called as biotic and abiotic so whatever living things we see uh, around us those can be called as biotic things and whatever non living things that we see around uh, us those can be called as abiotic things so these are the two things that we can you know go for it so whenever we think about the concept of environment in environmental sciences we guys have to go for the studies of two different things of two different purposes we have to go for first purpose that is living purpose and another one is what not living purposes or not living things purposes so those living and non living things can be called as biotic and abiotic things or biotic and abiotic components so there are two components of every environment whatever sort of environment we see around us there are two factors there are two elements there are two components one is biotic component and another one is abiotic component so here we talk about those things uh, especially here then what are the types of environments there are two types of environments that we can see one is natural environment and second one is man made environment so when what is the natural environment and what is there in on uh, man made environment that we are going to see as far as the uh, natural environment is concerned whatever we see in the nature that is a part of natural environment such as soil water air trees noise etc whatever we see and which is created by the nature which is the part and parcel of the nature that can be called as natural environment even when it comes to man made environment it is called as uh, you know whatever made by the human beings which can be also called as artificial environment so here in this artificial or man made environment n number of things can be considered whatever we as have made whatever human beings are made on the planet earth such as houses trees road building so on so those can be called as what house road <coughs> park etc and these kind of things can be called as what man made environment or artificial environment so what we get have studied from this particular slide that i'm going to tell you as far as environment science is concerned in environment science what we study we study about living things and we study about non living things uh, living things can be called as biotic component biotic component and non living things can be called as abiotic component 
when we guys have studied about types of environment there are two types of environments one is the natural environment where uh, we can see soil water air trees noise etc and when it comes to man made environment uh, it includes houses roads parks whatever is made by the man on the planet or those can be called as man made environment or artificial environment as such so this is for um, basic background which, which we are going to see in this particular session now components of environment as i told you there are you know uh, two components and those two components are a biotic which is also called as non living components biotic which is also called as living components whatever living things are there on the planet those can be called as biotic components whatever non living th things are there on the planet those can be called as abiotic components and one more is there that is another one energy components whatever energy components you can see whatever components which can be used for generating energy those can be called as energy components so we are going to see uh, these components in a systematic and detailed manner so first one we are going to discuss about that is uh, abiotic components the first one is what atmosphere second one is lithosphere third one is hydrosphere so these are the things uh, which we are going to see under the category of abiotic components whenever we think about abiotic components we can have to think about these three different aspects atmosphere lithosphere and hydrosphere and these are the contents of what of abiotic components then what are the functions of abiotic components that we are going to see it sustains life on the earth we are going to see all those things in a you know uh, very fast manner actually this one is the sort of information which is required for you guys so i'm going to cover in a little bit faster manner so what are the functions of atmosphere we always talk about atmosphere 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 we sometimes we say that atmosphere is not good like that atmosphere is nothing but what the climate that we see around us so what is the function or what are the functions of atmosphere those are also we are discussing here it sustains life on the planet earth so it is useful to sustain the life of we all on the planet earth because if we want to live the life on the planet earth atmosphere is good atmosphere atmosphere should be there it observe the cosmic cosmic sorry cosmic rays and other electromagnetic radiation coming from the sun as we know that this atmosphere is the most and important layer in the environment if it is not there what will happen the cosmic rays and that electromagnetic radiation will Uh, you know create some problem will hamper us or hamper on human beings so if we want to stop that it is necessary it balances heat of earth by observation sorry by absorption of ir and uv rays these are the two rays that we get from the sun that is ir rays and uh, uv rays and those can be absorbed by the atmosphere this is what atmosphere is most one it plays important role in carrying water from the ocean to the land through hydrological cycle and this atmosphere is uh, useful for hydrological cycle and through this hydrological cycle what happens the uh, the you know water from the ocean to the land is taken place and this is what water process is that that process is called as what hydrological cycle and uh, if you if we want to maintain this hydrological cycle this atmosphere is the most an important aspect then the last one oxygen support living being uh, begins co2 is, is is essential for photosynthesis of plant as we know that uh, photosynthesis is the process for plant which is must and through that photosynthesis process plant get the food and uh, co2 is required for that photosynthesis process so if we want to go for that photosynthesis process which is required for the plant then atmosphere is the most important aspect so for uh, all these functions or atmosphere function goes for all these kind of functions and this is what this one is the role of atmosphere that atmos uh, atmosphere uh, does through the functions so this is the fun these are the functions now the structure of atmosphere as i told you uh, there is one particular structure already we have seen this structure in um, images but i'm going to brief you through this particular slide about the structure of atmosphere so when it comes to the structure of atmosphere uh, the labels they have given 
Propos pair, yesterday we have seen, it starts from 0 km to 18 km. Then uh, Ratros pair, that is 18 to 50 km. Then Mesos pair, that is 50 to 85 km. Then Thermos pair, and, uh, which is also called as Inosphere, which is from 85 to 500 km. And the last one, that is Exosphere, it is 1200 or up to 1600 km. I think it may be asked for the, you know, objective examinations so just go through this and read it again so that it will be useful for you guys so here i have given the structure in terms of kilometers i have given go through that and remember this next one now we are going to see the energy components as i told you there are three components abiotic which is non-living biotic which is called as living and the last one that is also called as energy components there are certain energy components which are directly and indirectly associated with the environment and those are taken here energy flows across biotic and abiotic components so examples what are the sources of energies that we have given here and those are the sources are also called as components of energy so what are the sources of energy solar energy that we get from the sun whatever energy we get from the sun that is called about solar energy then nuclear energy then geochemical energy and the last one is thermal electric energy. So these are the energy components which are there in the environment and which we are studying here. Then scope of environmental studies. Let me go through one call. Please hold. Hello. Okay, so we are uh, talking about the scope of environmental studies, what sort of uh, environmental studies are there or how it is or what sort of scope for environmental studies is there that we can, we can understand from looking at these points. To get awareness and sensitivity to the local environment, already we guys have seen, we are going to protect this or sorry, we are going to skip this for a while. Then why this environmental education and all which is required for you all that we have seen then uh, now this one is the most important aspects that we need to discuss already the basic part already we guys are going through last two three lectures and today as i told you i'm going to start your second topic and that is ecosystem so ecosystem is nothing but what as i told you ecosystem is nothing but the system that we see around us which is created by the nature by the way so in ecosystem, we can see n number of things. We can see, you know, rocks, we can see trees, we can see water, we can see, you know, uh, <clears throat> mountain, we can see human beings, we can see animals. So all this, whatever is created by the nature, that is called as ecosystem. If you look at the picture, you can understand clearly what is ecosystem and why it is called as ecosystem. So this one is the topic of discussion today. And apart from that, we are going to talk about one more aspect of second topic biodiversity so two things or two different aspects we are discussing in today's session or even it will take three, three or three four lectures more to complete this and the topic which we are starting is ecosystem and biodiversity is the topic of discussion i hope you'll understand so starting with this so we are going to understand uh, what is ecosystem and what are the you know contents of ecosystem in a systematic manner see ecosystem means what an ecosystem is formed by the interaction between all living and non-living things so listen ecosystem is formed by the interaction between all living and non-living things ecosystem or as i told you what is include what is included or what it includes ecosystem includes all living and non-living things in another term ecosystem includes all biotic and abiotic things or components right so in ecosystem whatever living thing living means what those who are alive those who can walk they can talk they can grow they can die those can be called about living right like human beings animal insect all those are coming under the category of what living things non-living thing means what uh, rocks soil you know stones and uh, other things which are which can be called as non-living things so here we when whenever we want to understand the concept of ecosystem ecosystem is nothing but what 
the combination of living as well as non living things in other words it is a combination of a biotic and biotic components so we are going to understand one more concept here biome now there is one more word all these words are you know <clears throat> a scientific word so uh, you you may feel some sort of difficulty to understand but i will explain you there is no issue biome means what so a small ecosystem remember biome means what a small ecosystem already we have seen ecosystem in a broader sense but if we want to understand the concept of biome so biome is nothing but what a so small ecosystem which is in a small nature so we are going to understand what is this biome a set of ecosystem which are exposed to same climatic conditions with similar life cycle climatic conditions and physical structure so as i told you this biome is nothing but what it is also a part of ecosystem it is also an ecosystem but in a smaller nature in a small nature and this is what it is called as what ecosystem okay and which is also called as what biome so what you guys have to remember biome is nothing but what a small ecosystem which is there in the environment i hope you guys have understood now we are going to talk about a biotic component we are going to talk about the components of environment as i told you there are three components one is a biotic second one is biotic and third one is energy components so out of those three components of environment we are going to talk about the first one it is it is also called as what biotic uh, sorry components of ecosystem so out of those three elements of ecosystem first one we are discussing here and that is what a biotic components so first of all we are going to see we are going to understand what is biotic components as i told you uh, sorry as i told you a biotic component means what the components which are related to non living things okay non living means what those who are not in living manner those who are not living right so a biotic components that we are going to see here and the points which are taken here for the purpose of biotic that i will tell you look at the first one solar energy provides particularly all the energy for ecosystem so see there may be a question in the mind of you all how others are getting energy we are getting energy from different sources we have created some sources also but as far as others um, living organism and uh, non living organism what is the source of energy the source of energy for all of us is solar energy whatever energy we get from the sun solar energy means what energy that we get from the sun <clears throat> in organic substances for example sulfur burn trained to cycle through ecosystem so these are the un inorganic substances from that we get energy then organic compounds such as proteins carbohydrates Lip, uh, lipids and other complex molecules form a link between biotic and abiotic components of the system so as far as organic components are concerned we get such kind of organic components from the given example such as proteins carbohydrate lipids and other complex molecules next one biotic components now we will talk about uh, biotic as we guys have seen something about you know a biotic now we are going to talk about a biotic components what is that a biotic components that also we are going to see in this particular session so see as i told you biotic means what which are living things which are living components such as human beings insect we all are there which are in living nature so living organisms of an ecosystem classification of biotic components are so this biotic components is divided into two different parts and those two different components are again there is a sub classification atrophous and heterophous so these are the two one when it comes to atrophous organisms that produce their own food from an energy source such as the sun and the inorganic components so atrophous means what atrophous means what they create their own food they create their own food such as sun and inorganic components and when it comes to heterotrophs what does it mean organism that consume other organisms as a food so see 
now we are going to understand the food chain also so i have taken some snapshots i have taken some photographs to show you so in case of this heterotrophus means what whatever small 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 organisms are there that is the food for them the sapan mar de vinu ko lahan masala mote masala khaun takta kiwa ekad vaag shori khato so that is called as heterotrophus so that is means what organism is the food for another organism like that okay next one members of biotic components what are the members of biotic components that also we are going to see the first one is producers those who produces food then consumers in consumers category there are three different consumers primary consumers secondary consumers and tertiary consumers and the last one is decomposers who go for decompose who goes for decompose so as far as the member of biotic component that concern there are three different uh, components of biotic components one is producers second one is consumers under the category of consumers primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and last one is decomposers so remember it may be asked for the final examination of evs remember so this is the concept of what members of biotic components moving on to the next one and there we are going to talk about one more aspect and what is that aspect that we can see see uh next one is uh, here group of living organisms in ecosystem as i told you there is you know there are three atoms or there are three major components of ecosystem and those are producers consumers and de decomposers so those are clearly mentioned here from this particular chart you can understand as far as producers are concerned what they have given that i will show you i will tell you so listen this as far as producers are concerned uh, organisms that make their own food by photosynthesis whatever food i think there are certain plants there are certain producers on the planet earth producers means what they make their own food see have you seen trees are asking for the food as if they bagitle jhadu ghodpo tancha anna magat karte no they go for photosynthesis process in marathi we call it prakash sanshleshan prakriya karta ani tya prakash sanshleshan prakriye madhun te swatah channa sutta tayar karta so those can be called as what producers what do we do we do not make our food apan dusryanch geto jhadanch ghodpanch biya wagare phal khato so we do not make our own fruits we are the consumers so producer means what they make their or organisms that they make their own fruits by photosynthesis process and those can be called as what producers moving on to the next one and there we are going to see consumers under the category of consumers who are there organisms that they get food by eating producers or other consumers remember here whoever are the producers consumers are eat their foods producers they produce their foods and consumers they take the foods from the producers and they eat and they consume so under the category of consumers there are sub different sub categories what are the types of consumers primary consumers secondary consumers tertiary consumers and omnivores and what is that omnivores that i am also going to tell you under the category of primary waters feed directly on plants that is uh, heavy ores then secondary consumers feed on primary consumers tertiary consumers feed on secondary consumers and last omnivores that is eat both plants and animals this omnivores are you know we call it they are you know uh, mocketarians they eat both they eat also and they eat plants as well as animals also like uh, sometimes we can also see that the situation at home uh, at home some of them are vegetarian some of them they are non vegetarian and some of them they are both mhanje kay phal bhaja pan khata ani non veg pan khata tase jala yanche omnivores they eat both plants and animals also so this is the concept of uh, you know producer consumer and decomposers and this can be called as groups of living organism in ecosystem i hope you guys are getting my point whatever i am teaching are you getting or not are you getting hello hello are you there in the meeting or not hello somebody has to answer 
कळते का ओके सो दिस इज फॉर ग्रुप ऑफ लिव्हिंग ऑर्गनिझम इन इकोसिस्टम मुव्हिंग ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट वन अँड देअर वी आर गोइंग टू सी समथिंग डिफरंट एनर्जी फ्लो इन इकोसिस्टम हाऊ द एनर्जी फ्लो इज दॅट और वॉट सॉर्ट ऑफ एनर्जी फ्लो इज दॅर इन इकोसिस्टम दॅट ऑल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू सी लुक एट द फर्स्ट वन एनर्जी फ्लो इन इकोसिस्टम एनर्जी इज डिफाइंड एट द कॅपॅसिटी टू डू वर्क वाय एनर्जी इज रिक्वायर्ड Sometimes we also say that now I don't have energy. I don't want to do anything else. I want to eat something. And through the food we get energy that we know very well. Through the food that we get energy. So energy is defined as the capacity to do work. Apun arna ka khatu because we don't have capacity to work. If we want to work, we should have some food. And through the food we get energy, right? So this is what uh, it is there. and this is what it is defined like that energy is defined as the capacity to do work for living organism it is the basic force responsible for running all metabolic activities the flow of energy from producer level to top consumer level is called energy flow so what sort of flow is there see the flow of energy from producer level to top consumer the flow is what from producer those who are producing to the consumer that is the flow the flow of energy is an ecosystem is undirectional there is no proper direction as such like a top to bottom bottom to top or right to left left to right such kind of things is not there or south to north north to south east to west or west to east as not like that so it is undirectional it flows from producer level to consumer level only one direction is that and that direction is what it flows from producer to consumer that is the only thing in flow of energy then the process of energy flow involves transfer of energy from atos atotropes to various components heterotropes and help in maintaining biodiversity the process is what the process is like this is just transfer the energy from atotropes to various components of heterotropes that we get have seen the heterotropes and heterotropes in the last slide the main source of energy in this ecosystem is sunlight as far as the main source of energy is concerned as far as the source of energy energies on planet earth is none other than sun and that is the major source about 80% of energy is lost during flow of energy from one tropic level to the next one when we transfer the energy when we go for energy distribution or when this energy is transferred 80% of energy is destroyed remember and uh, this one is a huge loss i think researchers should work on this next one the water cycle that we can see water cycle we call it jal uh, chakra in marathi so this one is the water cycle as we know that how we get rain so this is the concept of water cycle just look at the picture and try to understand whatever i have shown in here in water cycle so this way we get water as we know that how it starts it starts like this okay evaporation jal apan we call it marathi bashpi bhavan then condensation then condensation big condensation then uh, precipitation uh, precipitation is also there then transcription is also there then from that we can get this kind of things then runoff is also there water goes to sea and again the same process will start so this way we go for the water cycle if we i think from this we can understand then we can have this carbon cycle also and from this global carbon cycle we can understand how the carbon cycle is there just go through the picture and try to understand or try to get some points carbon cycle or carbon is exchanged between the active pools due to various processes photosynthesis and respiration between the land and the atmosphere and diffusion between the ocean and the atmosphere so this is the thing that i would like to tell you and if you look at the carbon cycle you may understand just for the sake of information i am giving this tumhala ya sarva mahiti asava mhanun he sagla dakhavto tar tar apan jasti jast गोष्टी दाखवण्याचा शिकण्याचा प्रयत्न करतोय बिकॉज हे आपण पंधराच दिवस शिकतो फक्त खर तर हा वर्षभर शिकवायचा विषय लिमिटेशन्स आहेत आपल्याला म्हणून आपण जास्तीत जास्त गोष्टी दाखवूयात 
Then this one is the carbon cycle. If you look at this, you can understand the carbon cycle in a very thorough manner. How the carbon cycle works that you can see by looking at this one. Next one is here with us. This one is end cycle over land. This one is the end cycle over the land. And from that you can understand how the end cycle works. This is a way of going for end cycle over the land. Let's look at the figure, look at the picture and understand how this end cycle works. If you want to take a screenshot, you can take a screenshot also. Screenshot should be given to me and then the should be given to me and then the should be given to me. It's very simple. It is a pictorial. Pictures are used. So pictorial presentation is always good to understand. And I hope you guys are understanding this. Now the next one. This one is a nitrogen cycle. And from this nitrogen cycle also, you may understand something. So just go through this uh, nitrogen cycle. And uh, how this nitrogen cycle is an important one, that also you can understand from this one. So go through the nitrogen cycle. Now, the next one is here with us. That was the extended part of nitrogen cycle. Now this one is the P cycle. Just look at the P cycle. P cycle is a little bit interesting one. From that also you may understand so many things. This one is the P cycle. So look at this. I have taken purposefully. I have taken some photographs for you to show, so that you may understand. At least you may go through that, and at least you can see what is there in the environment. We all are not aware. We see an environment around us, but we are not aware what is there in the environment exactly. So this is what these kind, these things are taken here for understanding. Then this one is a phosphorus cycle. I think we guys have heard about this phosphorus. How this phosphorus is there? Animals, then mature bodies, etc. Manure bodies, etc. Then it will be harvested. Then this way the phosphorus is created. And this particular circle cycle is called as phosphorus cycle. Again, this one is a diagrammatic manner. That was a picture. Now this one is a diagrammatic manner. I'm trying to show you the phosphorus cycle. Then tropical levels. Now we are going to talk about tropical levels now. So those uh, cycles I have shown you. I hope you guys have enjoyed through my pictures, which I have taken from different sources to show you. Actually, I should say thanks to all those sources for providing this kind of you know pictures for better understanding. Okay, so now we are going to talk about tropical levels or tropic levels. Tropic levels meant what? A tropic level is a position occupied by an organism in a food chain. Tropic levels can be analyzed on an energy pyramid. See, tropic level is nothing but what? Not traffic. Traffic, I'm not talking about traffic. I'm talking about tropic. Tropic level means what? A level which is occupied by an organism in a food chain. There is one chain, as I told you, I have shown you the food chain. So in that food chain, whatever position is acquired by an organism, that particular level is called a tropic level. And tropic level can be analyzed on an energy pyramid. So there is one energy pyramid and from that pyramid you can understand. So as far as that, uh, you know, energy pyramid is concerned, the tropic levels are decided like this. If we think about producers, those are the first tropic levels. Then if we go for primary consumers, those can be called as second tropic levels. If it is secondary consumers, then it is called about third tropic level. And if it is the fourth one that is territory consumer, it is called a top and tropic level. So names are given like this. For producer, we call it first tropic level. For primary consumers, we call it second tropic level. For secondary consumers, we call it third tropic level. And for last one that is territory consumers, we call it top tropic level. So these are the tropic levels. I think you guys have to remember this. It may be asked for the objective questions. Next one. So this one is the pyramid and from that you can understand what are the levels and what. There are certain names also which are given. 
hereditary consumer, secondary consumer, primary consumer, and producers. So these are the trophic levels. From this, you can understand different types of consumers and its trophic levels also. Here we can see the systematic structure of food chain. You can here we can see the systematic structure of food chain. Each trophic level may contain many species. So this one is the things. If you look at the flow, it uh, flows from top to bottom. Solar radiation, primary producers, secondary consumers, secondary consumers, and territory consumers. Those can be called as what? This one is the flow of information, flow of uh, consumers. Solar radiation is what? Sun rays that we get. From sun rays, primary producer, they produce their food. Then primary consumers are there, secondary consumers are there and territory, territory consumers are also there. Then tropic levels, these are the tropic levels. Plants, heavy ores, carnivores, and top carnivores. These are the tropic levels. First, second, third, and fourth, top. These are the levels. Now, ecological succession that we can see in tomorrow's session. Here, I wind up my session at it is 120. One, one, uh, one nineteen, and it will take one minute to wind up. So here I'm going to stop my presentation, and I'll get back to my home screen, and I'll see how many of you are there still in the lecture. So this is for my second session today, and now it's one twenty. I have taken complete forty minutes lecture, and uh, for and I also appreciate your patience listening. You guys have listened very carefully, and you guys are very sincere. Thank you so much. And uh, now I'll, I'll just stop the recording part so that we can have.